Hi guys, Dan with Tamish here, and I'm a solution architect who has spent over the last decade, spent the majority of my time developing and architecting event-driven systems. And I want to share with you what I've learned during that time. So from my knowledge and failures, especially my failures, you will not make the same mistakes as I have and you have a stronger foundation to build upon. This video is the first of many in a new series which I'm gonna be publishing uh, around event-driven architecture so that I can share my knowledge with you. And in this video, the first video, we will start with the simple question, what is an event in event-driven architecture? And to answer that, we need to dive into the two types of triggers in event-driven architecture. So in event-driven architecture, you have a command or you have an event. So what is the difference? Well, a command is what you want to be done. It is an order. It is, it's an, a request. It is a trigger which triggers a process to perform an action. Whereas an event is what has happened in the past. It is a, it is a response. It is an outcome which triggers subscribers to perform actions when certain criteria are met. So let's take a very simple example around a dog owner wanting to register a dog at a vet using their online website. Um, now, before I go into that example, just to make note, I use the term topics, which is a term from a platform called Apache Kafka. And topic is a word which they use to uh, call the, the components which are the queues and event streams where you publish messages to. Anyway, uh, before I continue, uh, please click that like button. Right, now back to the example. So in this example, we have a client, which is the website, where an owner would register their dog. So once when the owner has filled in the form and clicked on uh, register, what will happen is the, the application would then publish a message to the request topic and the command could be register dog. That topic would then be consumed by another service which would then process the message and once when it has successfully processed the message, it could then publish another message to an event topic or an event stream, which could then be uh, subscribed to by more than one or more uh, services. And that's the power of event-driven architecture because you can have the, a processor publishing a message once and in that one message can then be used by multiple other services downstream. So, so what other actions could be performed by these other services? Well, you, you could be having to send an email. You could be having to monitor to a monitoring system. You could uh, keep an audit log. You could save to a database. This is a very simple example but hopefully it uh, communicates what the difference is between the two types of events. One is a command and the other is an event. What has actually happened? And used together, it can be very powerful in building any system. And if you found this video useful, please click that like button and please subscribe to be notified when I drop my next video about what are the benefits of event-driven architecture.